I'm Diana Bryant. I'm a volunteer wildlife rehabilitator. I have worked with Florida's wildlife uh, for over 14 years and I started into it because I love animals. And I was always the little girl in the neighborhood that had the mouse funerals and that kind of thing. And uh, always tried to get everything fixed and well. And when my children left home, I had to have something to throw myself into. So I started working with wildlife. And everything you do, you have to have all kinds of permits. I did uh, an internship, two and a half years. Um, you were required to have a thousand hours working under a wildlife rehabilitator. I had over 4,500 before I applied for my um, permit. You've got permits in Florida to work with mammals, but you have to go through U.S. Fish and Wildlife if you're going to work with wild birds. So I've got uh, Florida rehabilitation permits, U.S. Migratory Bird Permits, Educational Permits. I've got a permit to take a picture of the bird that I'm working with. Everything you do, you have to have a permit for. Wildlife rehabilitators are people that really care about animals and try and undo some of the damage that we have done to the environment. Every time you drive up and down the road, you'll see more and more trees cut down. Well, when those forests are cut down, the animals and the birds that live there have to find somewhere else to move to. A lot of times when those trees are cut down, there are nests of birds, nests of squirrels, raccoons in hollow trees. A lot of times there's a lot of babies that were in those woods. And I get some of those that I'm rehabbing. Um, right now I have squirrels and raccoons that I get up and down all through the night to bottle feed. Um, baby bird season's about over. There shouldn't be any more baby birds coming in this late. But we do all sorts of things, plus have a regular job too. Um, This particular owl is a barred owl, and she was hit in Graceville. She has eye damage. The, the right eye is destroyed. There's still an eye back in there, but it doesn't function. Some days it'll look like a normal eye. Some days it'll be all shrunken. And she, she can't see out of that eye, and I think she has some brain damage too. A lot of times when you have head trauma, that ends up happening. And uh, when she first came in, she would eat out of my hand. And after a couple of weeks on antibiotics, she decided she didn't like me so much anymore. The antibiotics are cherry flavored. Cherry is not a normal flavor for an owl. And so she stopped eating and so I had to start force feeding her. And in order to keep her alive, I have to force feed her every morning. She uh, will never be able to be released because of the damage that's been done to her. And she lives in a pen um, out in the woods. She has a, a mate. If you have a permanent bird, I believe that you know, they need one of their own kind so that they're not lonely. And, and barred owls are affectionate. They'll sit with their wings touching each other, sit close together. Uh, the birds have a, each pen has a pool in it, so owls like to play in water a lot. Any questions about barred owls? Are they common in this area? They're the most common of the owls. Um, and warm, rainy nights when the little frogs are in the roads, they're out hunting. Oh, okay. And I almost ran over one a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, in the that, middle of the road. that's what they're doing out there. That's an easy kill. Okay. They're out there catching those little hopping frogs all over the place. One morning after we'd had a night like that, I had five 
come in that had been hit by cars. This little guy is an eastern screech owl. And I've had him, I think, for six years now. And he was hit by a vehicle, and I get this call, and the guy says, I've found a baby owl that's been injured. Well, he's full grown. He'll never get any bigger than that. And uh, he's missing the right eye from the car wreck and most of the left wing. And uh, I've got to get him in and get his beak trimmed. His beak will grow too long and it's crossing right now. Scissors beak. And uh, one of their favorite foods are the palmetto bugs. They'll hunt those. And they've got little ear tufts. You know, you grouchy, aren't you? I don't know. <laughs> They've got little ear tufts like the great horned owl. We're going to show them. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Popping. <laughs> they are little, but I can make you bleed. <laughs> and uh, we have the brown ones, and we have um, a rusty red collared one in the area. He is grouchy today. <laughs> and. Um, you know, just like with the, the barred owl, no way to tell how old this owl is. I've had him six years in the wild, 10 years would be a long line. Um, you can imagine as little as he is, if we were hit by a car, we're gonna be messed up. And for him to survive it and somebody see him on the road at night as little as he is, he's just a miracle. And they are cavity nesters as well. And if you've got dead pine trees on your property with all those holes, the woodpeckers like to make in the trees, you have got eastern screech owls. You notice he's got little tiny feathers on his <coughs> head. And um, we're going to hit the vets on the way back to the house and get beat to them. Several years ago, I got a, a call to go somewhere out around Chipley in the boonies, and this guy had an owl that he'd had for three days, and he had it shut up in his barn. And he finally decided it might need help and went through the process and got a hold of me. And I walk out to the barn with him, and he's got it all closed up in the barn, and I go in, and it's a great horned owl, and he has it locked in a stall, and it's got a compound fracture of the wing, and he has it with a bowl of water and half a bag of tortilla chips. You know, and he was thinking, you know, chickens eat grain, you know, it's a bird, they're meat eaters. Everything here today is a meat eater. I fish and game called me yesterday and wanted to know if I had a net. A turtle had fallen in someone's swimming pool and nobody wanted to get in the pool to get the turtle and they wanted me to come with a net to get it out. Okay, any questions on little eastern screech owls? They're real common. They'd be all in these woods around us. Twelve or thirteen years old. So she is an old girl. And she's a mean girl too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, her injury, what makes her permanent is the damage to her right eye, she's blind in that eye. And she had been found by a hunter in the woods and she's trying to scare you and show you how big she is and she's got her feathers all puffed out and all. She's trying to look just as big <laughs> as she can. And if you watch her, she hardly ever takes her eyes off me. She's looking at a chance to get me. She does not like me. <laughs> So 
so you know she is she is an old old girl she has that eye damage and she had almost starved to death in the woods the hunter found her laying out in the woods and she was thin thin and she's strong and healthy now but she's proven that she can't hunt well enough to survive so she can't be the least and uh, several years ago, I was doing an outside bird program in Bluntstown, and they get really heavy on the end of your hand. She's a big girl. She probably weighs four pounds, and on the end of your hand, that gets heavy really, really quick. And I had been there doing a the bird program about four hours, and you're taking the birds in and out, and I'm standing there talking to a group of people. And I see her and the Jesses and the leash go furling off through the air. She got away from me. She flew and landed on top of a drive through bank. And everybody, can you get her? Can you get her? Well, this bird sheer hates me. If she could <laughs> make me melt in the floor right now, she would. And uh, so I might well say, here, come here, Shaytan, and her come to me. I took off running over to the bank and I'm praying the whole way because if she gets all tangled up in a tree somewhere where we don't know where she's at, it's a death sentence. She's going to starve to death or a predator's going to get her. And when I get over to the bank, she flies down between two vehicles and I tackle her. But she remembers that she got away from me that one time and if I have her out very long, You'll see her start trying to pull her feet up out of those jesses. And I have to really pay attention to her, especially when I'm outside, because she's looking for the chance. She did it once, and she remembers that. And look at her looking at me. <laughs> and if she gets the chance, she'll do it again. She, she likes to do little nasty tricks to show me just how much she does care about me. I'll walk into the pen early in the morning and she's got a pool in the pen. She'll fly across the, the pool and she'll dip her wings down in it and throw cold water all over me. I've, I've finally learned when I go into the pen, the pen is 12 by 12, she can raise her tail and shoot poop at me and hit me within eight feet. And she'll attempt to do that a lot of times. So I try and let her unload before I walk into the pen. And one day I was down there feeding, and you know, if I'm just out feeding, I'm not going to be picking up the birds and all. And I didn't have my gloves with me, and when I cracked the door open, she flew out low and landed right outside the pen. Well, the choice was to let her go and potentially let her starve to death or grab her barehanded. It took my hands a month to get well from the talons. Oh, when a bird of prey talons you, they'll, just like you're a mouse or a squirrel, they'll put those talons in and they'll squeeze. If they feel you struggle, they'll squeeze harder because you're not dead yet and they're going to squeeze you until you're dead. You have to wait for them to decide it's time, I'm going to let you go. I had a great horned owl hold me down for a half an hour one time. She is a beautiful hawk, and red-tailed hawks are common in the area. My birds eat every day, and they're going to be larger than most of the birds that you see in the wild, because they're not lucky enough every day in the wild to catch something. Her name is Shaitan Naji. Uh, one of my best friends is a Lakota medicine man, and uh, he especially loves the hawks. And all my hawks he names, and Shaitan Naji in Lakota means spirit of the hawk. And it's a good name for her because she is so proud and so full of herself, just the way she postures and all. And uh, she is. 12 or 13, I hope that she'll be around for many, many more years. Um, 
about three years ago, a, a hawk up in New England was found that had been banded, and they did check the numbers on the band and all, and it had come in as a juvenile during the Nixon, no, during the Reagan administration, and had been released and had lived 20 some years in the wild before it was injured. And the injuries to it, it was rehabable and returned to the wild again. So sometimes in the wild, they get lucky and have a really, really long life. But that's unusual. She's the, she's the oldest bird out of my place. That's what she's doing. And she has a nice pen in the woods. I hardly ever use her in bird programs anymore because she is so feisty. And she's done a lot of time in bird programs. She hasn't uh, done one probably since about April. So, you know, if you only had to work three or four days a year, that wouldn't be so bad at all. And I always try and bring her when I come here because she is neat. She's the neatest one I have. And she shares her pen with two other hawks, so she's not by herself, but she's the boss. And uh, if you're driving down the road and you see a hawk really high in the tree, it's probably going to be a red tail hunting. The red-shouldered hawks and the smaller hawks usually hunt from about halfway up in the tree. And they'll get rats, they'll go after snakes, rabbits, all kinds of different things. Squirrels. Um, got a call one time. A guy was driving down the road and uh, saw a hawk fly down, land on a snake. The hawk was going to have an easy meal. The snake wrapped around the hawk and choked the hawk down and was going to squeeze it to death. The guy got involved. Don't know what happened to the snake, but he brought the hawk to me. And she couldn't fly for three days because of her being squeezed and the soreness of her muscles and all. But after three days, she was able to fly again and took her back to where she had been picked up. Most birds of prey mate for life, and if you get an adult bird in, you try and take it back to where it came from. You want it back with its family. Anybody got any questions about red tails? When, uh, when I first started doing this, I thought, oh, there's three or four kinds of hogs. It's unbelievable the number of different hogs that we have just in Florida. And you see how she looks at me? <laughs> so, boy, if I get a chance, you're toast. <laughs> We've got Cooper's hogs and sharp shinned hogs, um, harrier hogs, broad winged hogs, short tail hogs, all kinds of different hogs. And then we've got ospreys and kites, all kinds of different things. And uh, I get calls from Fish and Game frequently. They tell me they've got a baby bald eagle for me. And I, I pretty well know it's going to be a Mississippi kite when they bring it to me. Mississippi kites, when their babies have white fuzz on top of their head. So I've worked with a lot of Mississippi kites in the year. This is Greta, the male great horned owl. And he does not look happy there. Was he hissing at you? Uh huh. They'll clap their beak and hiss. And um, he's one that sometimes he'll get real nervous if people are staring at him, and sometimes he'll hoot. He's done that here before. And, you know, you can't make them hoot and do things when you want them to, but sometimes he will. Uh, right now, you're going to hear a lot of great horned owl activity in the evenings. The fall of the year, they're really, really busy. And you'll hear at night, and they'll call back and forth. 
They mate for life. A great horned owl will not build a nest. They will find a squirrel nest or a hawk nest or a crow nest that's not in use and take it over. They will not build their own nest. And uh, several, several years ago, <coughs> they did a study and someone hung a laundry basket way high up in a pine tree. And a family of great horned owls used that basket for 10 years before it fell apart. And they replaced it with another basket and it, that one fell apart after four years. So, but they, they will use things like that and um, the couple will get together and the male will start bringing her mice and squirrels and bringing her all kinds of presents and they'll mate and the female will lay anywhere from two to five eggs and she'll lay an egg skip a day lay another egg so when the babies hatch they're going to hatch on different days too so you have little owls and big owls in the same nest Two is probably the most common number, and whoever hatches first, they have a greater chance of survival. It's hard to feed yourself and feed a family out there in the woods when you're having to catch squirrels and rats and all that. And usually the bigger babies have the best chance of surviving. When the eggs are laid, they're round and white and they're the size of a chicken egg. And within 70 days of hatching, the great horned owls have reached their adult size. It's unbelievable how fast they grow. And at about 70 days of age, they'll start their first little short flights branching in the trees. The parents will stay with them all the way through the end of the And the, the ear tufts and the Little Eastern Screech Owl has ear tufts too. They use them to express emotions. If the great horned owl is calm, those ear tufts will be laid back and it'll just look like it doesn't have any. The, the great horned owls, their favorite is sirloin tip steak. And almost every night they have sirloin steak cut up like stir fry for them and I've got three permanent great horned owls. And uh, I use a lot of chicken too with the, the hawks and with the barred owls. And you can buy raptor vitamins just like you can buy prenatal vitamins and other vitamins for humans, you can buy raptor vitamins. And I'll sprinkle that on the meat so that they get the calcium and everything that they need. And uh, this is my passion, this is what I love. I love working with the animals.